Hello everyone. In the last video, we implemented the concept of OCV on setup timing analysis and we got a slack which is negative slack and that actually was a thing to worry because the system which we expected to run at 1 GHz because of this negative slack now might not run at 1 GHz but somewhere at lower frequency let's say 980 or 970 megahertz okay okay so let's try to look into another another uh, first of all let's uh, delete these old numbers and bring in the new delete deleted numbers okay so these are your new numbers for or new delays for this particular clock network with after 20 percent duration okay but there is a catch over here and the catch is if you look into these two sections of your network or these two sections of your circuit this is the launch clock section and this is the capture clock section and these two section appear to be common into your network what does that exactly mean and 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 the point is how how can that help us okay let's look into the point first so if you see these section the b1 of a or let's bring it again b1 of a b1 of i b2 of a and b2 of y and similarly we have b1 b2 over here so this section is common to the launch flop and the capture flop okay and as per as per our uh, recent calculations based on ocv we had got two delays for for this particular cell b1 okay so the first delay was 43 picosecond let's put it over here it's 0 0.043 nanosecond or 43 picosecond and the second delay was 34 picoseconds which is 0 0.034 nanoseconds okay so a cell is showing two different delays at the same instant of time and that's practically not possible okay it's as good as a person who is running on a street at two different speed at same instant of time which is not possible if a person is running he will be running at one speed at say at, at one instant of time there won't be two different speeds for for a for a person running at at time instant t similarly this cell when it is operating at a time instant t it can have either 43 picosecond or 34.4 picosecond but not both of them and that is true for all the cells which is there in the common path for the uncommon path b3 and b4 can have two different delays but b1 and b2 can't have two different delays at same time instant t okay so it's that this is just the conclusion that we have mentioned that a cell cannot have two delay values at same time at same time instant t it can have either 43 picosecond or 34 picosecond so there is so so the way that we have to do the calculation is in the launch and the capture clock path for the delay of this particular cell b1 we have to put either 43 picosecond or 34 picosecond but not both okay or in the capture clock path we can put a delay of 34 picosecond or 43 picosecond but not both this is how we, we, we would be uh, doing uh, the calculation or what we can do is since now we know that there is an extra pessimism or there is an extra delay number that got added in the calculation and that extra value is 8.6 picosecond basically 43 picosecond minus 34 picosecond since now we know there is an extra pessimism that got added 8.6 picoseconds we, we the, the the only job is remaining is to remove this pessimism from the complete analysis okay so how do we do that so first of all we have to remove this additional pessimism so before that let's try to calculate the complete amount of pessimism that got added to this common clock path okay so if you calculate the delay of this common clock section of the arrival time and the and the required time the delay of this particular block is 128 nanosecond 128 picosecond or 0.128 nanosecond you just have to add up this delays of this of each and every element so the net delay plus the cell delay plus the net delay plus the cell delay that comes up to around 128 picosecond or 0.128 nanosecond you can do a math on this and similarly for this particular block the delay is 102.4 picosecond or 0.1024 nanosecond okay so if you see this block and this block as we discussed just now can't have two different delays at same time instant t so there is an, there is an additional delay from the date that that got added in the data arrival time which is uh, which is uh, the subtraction of 1.128 uh, one minus 1024 one picosecond which comes to around 0 0.025 uh, uh, 0 0.025 nanosecond or 25.6 picosecond so 25.6 picosecond get got additionally added over here or, we, or, or to look into uh, to look this from a different point of view there are two point of views to look this particular delay as so we can say that 25.6 picosecond got additionally added over here okay or 25.6 picoseconds got removed from here 
that's that's the uh, that's the uh, uh, math that you can do so either of uh, there is a, there are two different ways to look into this particular pessimism okay so either 25.6 picosecond got accidentally added over here or 25.6 picosecond got removed from here so to make this lag calculation correct so what we have to do is we have to add this pessimism to over here or remove the pessimism from data arrival time so for for now what we'll do is we'll add this particular pessimism over here we are not basically adding the pessimism we are adding what got lost over here so 25.6 picosecond got lost over here so once we add this 25.6 picoseconds in the data required time this will this will become 128 picoseconds or 0.128 nanosecond this will again become 0.128 nanosecond and the common clock path has been taken care okay so let's try to add 25.6 picoseconds in the data required time so what we get the value that we get is 1.12 nanosecond okay so now after adding adding so now everything is got balanced so the clock the, the the data arrival time clock network delay is 128 picosecond the data required time clock network delay is now 102 102.4 plus 25.6 picosecond which is now 128 picosecond it's not written over here but it's 128 picosecond and the way we did the calculation is we added this pessimism in the data required time we could have done the other way around we could have subtracted the uh, pessimism from the data arrival time and we'll be looking into that in some time from now or maybe in the next lecture maybe but there is a way to do that also either way you can do it so the, the so in the setup timing analysis let's try to add the 25.6 picosecond as we did just now let's try to add the 25.6 picosecond in your data required time and the new data required time will be 1.12 nanosecond and now when you try to calculate the slack with this data required time and this data arrival time the slack appears to be positive and we are in safe hands now okay so this is the, a very important term the additional pessimism uh, parameter which is called as ap this term is very important to remove some amount of pessimist pessimistic calculations that happens in your slack so sometimes so this is the most important part that often often gets neglected by due to maybe human error or because of some some switches or some settings that actually miss them but this is a very important thing or very important factor that needs to be accounted for when we try to do a setup or whole timing analysis because and the reason is pretty simple because if you see there is the, the, the this actually helps your slack to become positive it's still five picosecond it's still positive by a marginal by a marginal number but still the slack seems to be positive and this circuit still has got that hope to work on one gigahertz frequency okay so that's the power of this additional pessimism uh, parameter or it's called as uh, clock pessimism uh, clock path pessimism maybe because it most of them th most of the things are being removed from your clock path so this basically term can be called as clock path pessimism or anything we call it as additional pessimism ap and that get gets added to your data required time and you get a positive slack so even if you miss to even if you even if you do this kind of analysis and then you implement the ocv and see a negative slack okay still that particular circuit has got a hope of can can work at basically one gigahertz and you have a positive slack that's the whole point of having the pessimism term in the setup timing analysis so what we'll do is in the next video we'll be looking into the similar concept while we do a whole timing so we will follow a similar flow where we convert a whole time graphical representation to a textual representation and do the complete calculation right from without OCV, with OCV and with OCV and additional pessimism being removed. So let's try to do all this in the next video. Thank you.